Welcome to Awesome Scuba Adventures. My name is Gary Leach. In this episode, I wanted to talk to you about the six subsystems of scuba diving. The six subsystems of scuba diving include the snorkeling system, the exposure system, the air system, the information system, the buoyancy system, and the accessory system. Okay, the first subsystem is the snorkeling system. It includes the mask and snorkel, the fins, and the booties. Two considerations for selecting a mask are fit and comfort. I suggest you visit your local dive shop and try on several masks and determine which best suits you. Since your second stage regs come around your right side, be sure to mount your snorkel on the left side of your mask so as not to interfere with your regs. I also suggest you visit your local dive shop to select your booties and fins to ensure they meet your expectations for fit and comfort. These particular fins are called split fins based on the tip of the fin. Other typical fins are called paddle fins as they have one solid piece making up the tip of the fin. These booties have hard soles which allows me to wear them on almost any terrain. They also have high ankles with a zipper on the inside of the booty for ease of putting on or donning and removing or doffing. The second subsystem of scuba diving is the exposure system. This includes wetsuits, gloves, different types of hoods, and rash guards. You'll want to consider the type of diving you plan to do when you're selecting a wetsuit, including the water temperature, number of dives in a day, etc. The human body loses heat 25 times faster in water than in air. Each wetsuit has its own set of features, and in recent years, some have multiple color choices. Some of the features on this wetsuit include knee pads, and wrist and ankle zippers, which help ease the efforts of donning and doffing. And in this model, the main zipper is in the back. A vest with integrated hood is a nice addition when the water is not cold enough for a wetsuit or when it's too cold for only a wetsuit. I often wear mine under my 5 male wetsuit in colder water to provide more warmth in the torso, head, and neck areas. These dive gloves are lightweight. They provide minimal thermal protection while protecting my hands both from things in the water and from the sun when I'm out of the water. For colder water, you may wish to use heavier dive gloves, such as a 3 mil or a 5 mil thickness. Hoods are for use in colder water. They help keep your head and neck warm. For not so cold waters, you may consider using some other type of head covering, such as this cap. Rash guards are nice for use in warmer waters to protect from things in the water and from the sun when out of the water. The ones I've seen are commonly rated to 50 SPF. The third subsystem of scuba diving is the air delivery system. This includes your scuba tank and your regulators, which is your first stage regulator, which attaches to the tank, and your second stage regulators, which is what you breathe off of. 80 cubic foot aluminum tanks, sometimes referred to as aluminum 80s, are commonly used in scuba diving. When training in the pool, you may be provided with smaller ones, such as 63 or 50 cubic foot tanks. The first stage regulator is attached to the tank's valve. You merely need to finger tighten because the O-ring on the tank valve will create a seal when it's exposed to the high pressure air from the tank. The fourth subsystem of scuba diving is the information system. This includes your pressure gauge, your depth gauge, your compass, and your computer. When pressurizing the system, the analog pressure gauge located on the bottom of the console will display the pressure inside the tank. This one shows about 3200 PSI. The depth gauge is a pressure gauge that's calibrated to display in units of feet or meters below the surface to let the diver know how deep they are at any point during the dive. A dive compass is designed for use in underwater navigation. Both the computer and the analog pressure gauge indicate a tank pressure of about 3200 PSI. You can then test the second stage regulators by purging and breathing from them. The yellow hose is the alternate second stage reg and the black hose is the primary second stage reg. The fifth subsystem of scuba diving is the buoyancy system. This includes the buoyancy compensation device, 
and the weights. This BC is a back inflate style. BCs have adjustable shoulder and waist straps to allow the diver to get the BC as snug as meets their comfort level. They also have an attachment on the left shoulder to attach an inflator deflator hose which is used to assist with setting and maintaining desired buoyancy while diving and floating on the surface. One feature of this BC is two pockets for which to store items while diving. Most if not all BCs today come with integrated weight pockets. Weights are placed in the weight pockets and they're locked in place. The sixth subsystem of scuba diving is the accessory system. Basically that is anything that does not fit into the other categories. And it can be any number of these things plus a lot more. This is a very small selection of the accessory items available to scuba divers. Your local dive shop is likely to have several display areas for a multitude of accessory items that may be of interest to a scuba diver. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to share with family, friends, and scuba buddies. Also, please let me know if you have any suggestions you'd like me to consider for future episodes. Have an awesome day. I'm Gary Leach, and together we're making the world a smaller place, one dive adventure at a time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Awesome Scuba Adventures.